Hey guys, and welcome back to Ghost Trick. We had a shuffle at that there blackboard in Prisoner D99 cell, and uh, suffice it to say, I don't think he should make any plans for tomorrow, because, uh, frankly, I don't think he's going to have a tomorrow. But regardless, Lynn wanted us to tell us the results. So, uh, yeah, let's head to the chicken kitchen. Point to X and tell her the deets. Let's do this. Um, Lynn's probably dead, because, you know, it's Lynn. Lynn, what the hell happened here? <laughs> I'll tell you what happened. Death by chicken. Only the best way to die. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah, I can make out a slight tinge of red beneath the uh, beneath the giant chicken, and I don't think that's blood. So, uh, yeah, let's roll on over. Obviously, using uh, the wheel here. And make contact with the dearly departed. God, we can't leave you alone for five minutes in a fucking franchise restaurant. We left her alone. And look what happened. She gets demolished by a monument to fried chickenness. Mm. Like, you it's like being killed by hugs. It's the best thing ever, and you manage to fuck it up and kill yourself with it. This is why toys have safety labels. It's because of fucking Lynn. Yeah, pretty much. I mean it, it to be fair, Lynn's probably gonna die pretty much every time we see her. Cause, you know, that, that's that's just her thing at the minute, it seems. All I've taken from this is maybe there could be a spin-off, Ghost Trick Babies, where a toddler Cecil has to look after... <laughs> oh no, a little bit too dark, I <laughs> no, think. No, Lynn, don't put the fork in the light socket. It doesn't go there. Trick the fork to bend backwards. <laughs> oh, God, oh my. Okay, yeah, let's stick to the deal and uh, swap information. But first, Lynn, I think you've got some splaining to do. Yeah, because it looks like Lynn, you're kind of a murderer of us. Yeah, not cool. That's definitely not cool. On my list of things that are not, you know, cushy, killing me is in the top three, at the very least. <laughs> it's up there with not liking anime, um, telling me how to eat, and yeah, murdering me, alright? There's sort of just limits in relationships. And voting Hillary, that's number one. Oh, <laughs> is that funny? I don't do politics. I don't know if that's funny or not. It's just kind of weird to hear you do our politics, but <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I thought. I mean, you had all of Brexit to make a joke, and you went for us. Okay. No, no, no. I've I've already covered Brexit in the Resident Evil playthrough. Go watch that if you want our side of the pond. For God's sake, Tom! <laughs> like seriously, like. You'd use your Brexit jokes on the on the other British guy and you leave me high and dry. Well, yeah, well, that's just something you don't deserve. By uh, caliber of comedy, Richie, no, you get me bitching at you, and I'm using that term correctly this time. Yeah, maybe, maybe not quite so correctly, but shuffle over that one. Um, yeah, I, I basically sort of, we've become slightly like the old married couple of HFC, haven't we? Like? I thought you guys were! Man, this was getting <laughs> awkward as a third wheel. Yeah, well, we uh, we adopted Flame. Make of that as you will, so... I don't know where the fuck this conversation is going, but... Uh, no, 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 I, I need to know, because I want to be on the Christmas card list. We'll see, we'll see. Well, Mexi, in this weird-ass analogy, you are basically one of the fun uncles, I think. Heck yeah. I'm the funnest uncle. I you said funnel calls for a second there. I didn't know what the fuck you were talking about. <laughs> Here comes the funnel, uncle! <laughs> like, when someone talks about man's planing, I always think of it as man planing. You know, like the door frame or something. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this part is retarded, I'm sorry. No, Tom. Mansplaining is when you tell commentators how to talk over their video games. Uh huh. So, yeah, memory. It's a big running thing in the game. Dead people can't remember certain things, apparently. You'd think Lynn, having been brought back to life so often, would actually, you know, be starting to get her memories back, but maybe not. Maybe certain events are too traumatic, they're blocked out. I always saw it as, like, a, a format change, you know, you're gonna lose a little bit of quality every time. You know, with the whole ghost equal electricity, I mean, you could probably think of memories and the souls as data. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. You know, Ghost Trick just got really sci-fi punk, and it's great. This is like Ghost Trick in a shell. Yes.
It's like, it's like when you upload a video to YouTube and then you lose the raw file, so you have to download it from YouTube and it's like, oh, it's three megabits in quality, even though I uploaded it at like its uh, original bitrate. Hmm, not great. Okay. My, my entire skin. Well, that's because YouTube hates everybody. Your analogy just made my entire skin crawl. Oh, it was awful. Yeah, I mean, you know, it, it, there's lots of options for tomorrow. He could go work out, uh, he could nap. I mean, you've got a lot of time to sleep. That's what I do in between commentaries and whatnot. Yeah, that was my suggestion. If you have nothing scheduled for tomorrow, talk over some video games, paint some more, go on vacation. Put up with Tom's like, temper tantrums. The world is his oyster tomorrow. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, th those are the options, but, you, you know... Probably doesn't have a schedule because you know, yeah, he's he's gonna be dead because he ain't got it tomorrow. Makes two of us, eh? Well, that's that's wrong then. And they should have put on his schedule that he's busy the entire day. <laughs> yeah. God, why even have a schedule if you're not gonna update it? <laughs> no words, just a skull and crossbones. Either that, or you know, they should have put out of the office. Oh, that's a good metaphor. Out to lunch. Oh. Permanently. <laughs> not, 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 a, not a metaphor, a euphemism. I always get those two mixed up. Or, you know, hey, uh, hey, Jad, you want to play Hangman? Okay. Ah. Seems, <laughs> seems a bit on the nose, but I'll accept it. Huh. He wants to die? Now, why would he want to die? Unless he's either trying to hide something, or he's guilty, or maybe both. Believe it or not, suicide by police is actually a diagnosable thing. Like, apparently there's enough cases that there are studies on suicide by police, so yeah. As depressing as that sounds, he could have some motives for wanting to be executed. Beautiful. God, just put it in a fucking museum. <laughs> also, why didn't he tag Cecil in it? <laughs> oh my god. Sorry, when I think of tags nowadays, I think of hashtags. Uh, I've done a few stupid ones in my time. But, uh, Richie, we were talking about, in many, 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 many failed takes, The Chicken Kitchen. Is it an actual franchise place? From what I can tell, no. I could be wrong on that. that like, there are multiple chicken kitchens throughout the world, um, including... A website called www.chickenkitchen.com but that's asking me to activate flash and uh, <laughs> that's not happening um, but yeah there's chicken kitchens in London um, there's one in Kolkata there's one in Melbourne so I mean to be fair they've not got the highest um, ratings in the world I mean I have to say though the chicken kitchen in London has got four and a half stars out of five on TripAdvisor. It's just the um, ones that are on Zomato which have got like 3.2 and 2.6 so they're probably probably avoid them but then again to be fair it's like TripAdvisor slash Zomato so people like to vent in their uh, reviews online. Oh that's always a delight to deal with whenever you're doing social media for any sort of company. Also, what a tragic statement that people are looking up a chicken-related kitchen on TripAdvisor. Really? You can't just throw yourself in and experience the local cuisine. You gotta go straight to the chicken. Nope. So, I live in a really small town, and we have a restaurant here. Uh, it's not a chicken kitchen, but it's called Chicken in a Foil. And it's actually really delicious. It's Chinese-Japanese food, and the most adorable thing is the fact that the register is usually run by an eight-year-old, and she is the most adorable and the smartest eight-year-old that will ever take your order. Oh. Ever. And our town is so small that if you actually, like, look up the travel advisory, like, they literally mention the chicken in a foil by name as one of our best restaurants. It's like, it's just a little shack. It has delicious food, but I just find it hilarious that the chicken in a foil is the most famous restaurant in our entire village. Well, yeah, but to be fair, like, people find something and think, oh, this is quite special. Then they tell their friends about it, and suddenly, yeah, it's, it's actually surprisingly famous. I like to go there all the time to get their teriyaki chicken on some fried rice. Oh, do you do you like the Mulan sauce, Maxi? Do you like to partake of meme, <sighs> meme liquid? 
No, I don't, because I don't even go to McDonald's anymore. Why would I go for meme sauce? Wubble 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 wubble. Shit on the floor, etc. Uh. <laughs> Those people deserve 15 an hour. I deserved 15 an hour when I had to put up with that shit. I didn't even have to deal with Rick and Morty fans. I just dealt <laughs> with garden poor... variety, stupid and crazy. You poor bastard. Anyway, let's try and bring Lynn back to life. Let's get some actual chicken in here instead of one gigantic one crushing her. She made a very fine looking crushed corpse, by the way. I've seen people crushed through no fault of my own. I accidentally came across it while uh, surfing the fortunes. Yeah. Not fun. Oh. Mmm. You see, this is why I don't search 4chan. I don't... I'm sure I'm not going to like what I'm going to find, so I just avoid it like the plague. Aw, poor Richie, you're just not living life. You gotta be on the edge. You want. You gotta live life like there's trauma around every corner. Trauma. Not yet, not yet, Tom. Get back in your seat. The music. It's coming. Ooh, it's coming. Did you ever have to wear a hat like that, Maxie? No, the only hats I've ever had to wear, um, I had to wear a regular baseball cap, and that was fine. But there was a time I was working at a barbecue restaurant, and I had to wear a trucker hat. That shit is annoying and obnoxious, because they don't fit my head, and just the mesh is irritating. And luckily I was able to convince my boss to just let me wear a different hat. <laughs> Good shout. I have to say, I, when I went to St. Mara to wear a baseball cap as well, that was, it was just like, oh, for God's sake, it just, I just feel dirty Ooh. because obviously you don't really tend Nasty. to wash the hat. And yeah, it just always smelt of popcorn and it just, just wasn't fun. You see, that's a why nice smell, I basically. Though. Not when you've been working around it for hours and hours and hours and all your clothes smell of popcorn. Oh man, I've had my clothes smell like weird stuff from work. They've had them smell like tacos, I've had them smell like uh, smoked barbecue, and now they just all smell like weed. <laughs> <laughs> so I think I'm moving up slightly in the world here. Be careful, your clothes might incite violence within you, Maxi. Oh, uh, that's just what the war on drugs tells you. <laughs> in jokes! Haha, <laughs> funny chicken! Follow me at at MexiBaseMonkey on Twitter.com. <laughs> uh. So yeah, we're dealing with not one, but two corpses this time around. I'm not actually sure who I feel more sorry for. The dumbass who drove through the window, or, you know, Lynn, who got crushed by a giant chicken. Maybe we can save both of them, maybe we can save just the one. I know which one I care about the most, though. That's right, the one who actually has normal pupils and is a fleshed out character. Anywho, we're going to start things here with a bit of a timed puzzle, and you have to do this just right, otherwise I don't think anything will happen. you got to do this three times in quick succession, which will bring the waitress over. I also like little restaurants where they have a flag and you have to lift the flag to get the waiter's attention, but I'm also impartial to just shouting across the building, Hey! Where are my fries at? Oi, con! Where's my burger? <laughs> Uh, yeah, I, th I think that's one thing that I've always found weird with restaurants is how s people try and grab the attention of the waiters. Because you've got people like um, me and my family who will wait until someone's close by and go, um, it's excuse me, just like really awkwardly, um, even though like we need something or we want to speak to somebody about complaining or whatever. And we're just like really, really ultra polite. And um, then you've got the people who like, yeah, shout across the restaurant. You've got the people who who do the, the, the do the clicking, just like oh, the clicking come here, the peasant. Snapping. Yeah, that's that's just oh, that's awful. Don't do that. This entire part is just going to be me having PTSD flashbacks of fast food. <laughs> uh, uh. There, there was a book I read once. I forget the author's name, but he did like travel books and whatnot, which are mm -hmm. a, a surprisingly good read. The book is called The Life and Times of the Thunderbolt Kid. And uh, it's about the author recounting his childhood. And in one of the restaurants he went to as a kid, uh, I believe this is also like mandatory as well, by the way. Why should I just go back downstairs? You don't want to go there. But anyway, dude went to a restaurant with his family and... Uh, at the booths, they had like a little light you could just flick on, oh. and like any passing waitress would know that you need service. And I think that's just pretty cool. It's non intrusive, it's polite, and you know, it keeps the atmosphere nice and chill. Exactly, and the writer that you're thinking of is Bill Bryson. Yes, yes, it is. 
Yes, and he is definitely one of the most famous travel writers out there, because, like, in a lot of my um, literature studies, every now and again, Bill Bryson would turn up in some form. I, I assume he's a, less of an asshole than Anthony Bourdain, because that guy pisses me off. Really? He will literally just go into restaurants and just, like, demand their best food, and he's always an ass. Like, I could never even watch his show just because every time he walked into Russia, it's like he expected the best and to be treated like the best. It's like, dude, you're just a tourist. Yeah, you may be reviewing this stuff, but you're still just a tourist like any other. You realize that, that every time he goes into a place, he didn't notice that there was already a film crew there, so maybe they'd set oh, up I knew ahead there of was time. all that, but it's... Yeah, but he's still an asshole even then. That's the whole thing, like... Yeah, you would have thought that he would have... So, oh, I'm on camera. I should probably actually be a pleasant human being because this is going to be uh, beamed out to people Thank you. across the world, and they're going to think, oh, he's actually an asshole. I'm probably not going to watch this program anymore because I don't want to give him any money. Also, I like these I characters, care. you know. <laughs> I like no reservations. There you go. I said my piece, Mexi. Yes, you like Jesse and James over here, Blue Verizon. Yes. Oh, fine. I don't like any of the characters in this game anymore. I don't want to play. <laughs> I don't want to play Let's Plays with you. Taking my microphone and going home. Understandable. Can she sense us? Getting a bit of a whiff of the sixth sense over here? Well, I mean, it wouldn't surprise me. We're in a world where ghosts exist. It's only right that there are at least one or two people who have sixth sense abilities. I mean, also, we've got people whose faces are blue, therefore, having a sixth tent is definitely not out of the question. Ghosts exist. You would think that mediums and spirit channelers would be like an everyday thing. Why does the restaurant not serve any other kind of chicken besides just the full, very stereotypical, like, Thanksgiving turkey style chicken? You can't just get, like, a drumstick to go or something? I know, where's the two breasts meal? Where's the vegetarian option? Excuse me, is this meal vegan? <laughs> well, to quote uh, Mr. F. Boyle, there is a vegetarian option. You can fuck off. <laughs> Pretty much. Although, to be fair, it would not surprise me if... Well, I mean, it would, would surprise me if they did have this, but, like, a vegetarian version of this chicken that basically just looks exactly the same, but it's actually vegetarian. Oh, tofu basically pounded and mashed into chicken shape. Yeah, basically. Probably be disgusting, but hey! It's basically Soylent Green, except the chicken isn't people, it's beans. This is another time-sensitive thing, you gotta get to this glass over here, and then you ring the bell, which brings the waitress up to flirt with not guile. Blue guile. There's a lot of blue varieties of characters in this airport. I thought this was Blue Strawheim. Yeah, yeah. See, I was waiting for you to make it, but if you're not, I'll take it. Motherfucking JoJo reference. There you go. Gotta fill a quota, I guess. Oh, for God's sake. Come on, you're on duty here. At least wait for your break before you float with every living thing in the establishment. Well, to be fair, at least she's flirting with someone who is probably a decent human being because their skin is not blue. Oh, I see how it is. He doesn't want these advances. This is sexual harassment, okay? This workplace is just tons of lawsuits. The chicken's hanging from the ceiling. The employees are flirting on the clock. The waitresses have very dangerous roller skates while wearing elevators. Just, it's a lawsuit waiting to happen. While wearing um, yes. elevators. Yes, it's interesting. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, wearing elevators is a bit of an odd slip up there. But to me, to be fair... Would not surprise me if someone has cosplayed as a, a lifter in elevator at some point in their lives. <laughs> but there, there was a convention recently, I forget the name of it, but someone went as the convention center itself, like a paper mache I think model. That was New York City Comic Con. <laughs> yes, yes, it was. Mexico. I've seen those. I've seen uh, people cosplay as the carpet for the convention sometimes. Oh, that's great. Yeah. Those ones are really, really nice. And he doesn't respond at all. Take a hint. 
Also, probably get Lin her chicken a little faster. Your life might depend on it. Spoilers. Literally. Oh, here comes Fuckboy. <laughs> yeah, that, that basically is his role. And from what I recall, I don't think he ever really grows outside of that. You mean a pair? He's a stereotypical antagonist. He doesn't really need any character development. He's just there to antagonize the good guys. Basically, yes. I mean, to be fair, the dominant female with the submissive male as the villain duo is an anime cliche as old as time. Like, I think this goes back to Yatterman. There's still, like, f dominant females with submissive male, like, underlings. Is Yatterman... I forget uh, what game it was. Was it Tatsunoko vs. Capcom? Were they in that? Yeah, that's actually how I got introduced. I, I won't try and, like, hide how casual I am about it, but yeah, I didn't really get into old Tatsunoko cartoons until I played Tatsunoko vs. Capcom. It's pretty hard to expect a crossover, honestly. They should do more stuff like that. And it's so good in such a beautiful game that I miss that they, they're still trying to go more real and down to earth. It's just like, no, give me colors. So many flashy colors. Also, more Clover characters. All the Clover characters. All the Clover characters. Well, no, because Beautiful Joe and Amaterasu are not part of Marvel Infinite, so... And that is why that game is awful. Thank you! God! I say having never played the game, obviously I can't actually comment on its overall quality, but in my eyes, it's automatically bad because it doesn't feature Army and Joe, because clearly they are two of Capcom's best characters ever. It's an objective fact. I think uh, my theory about her sensing is... Might be right on the money, but uh, maybe she just hates bugs. Who knows? Also, what the hell did she just like? Did she light the bug on fire, or what was that? That was the bug, yeah. That was the bug. That's a really extreme way to just squish a bug. Why would you light it on fire? Well, she doesn't want to dirty her hands. She'll let the fire, glorious, ever-encompassing, ever-destructive fire, do the job for her. Okay. And also, you know, she's quite sadistic, so she's just going, yes, burn! Okay, this is gonna, this is gonna come down to the wire, I think, so uh, I hope you're ready for a bit of a do-or-die situation. I thought they were cuddly toys for a second, but they're just hiding under the table. Yeah, they do actually look rather adorable down there, but yeah, this bit did nearly give me a heart attack when we were recording, because it's just like, oh my god! Just the timing is ridiculous. If you can deal with me at my worst, you can deal with a bit of a do or die situation in a video game, okay? That's true. I mean, that is true, um, but it gets really super close. We can't actually save Lynn from within the chicken kitchen, so, you know, we went back in time four minutes. Who's to say we can't go back in time four minutes more? Yes, we're doing Trickception. I thought this was time compression. I definitely remember this being the ending of Final Fantasy VIII, where they time traveled into a time traveler to try and travel even further back. Oh, my head. And this is why time travel is complicated. <laughs> and why it doesn't make sense. Unless it's Steins Gate, in which case it's beautiful art and it's the greatest thing ever created. Wash. Straight over my head there, unfortunately. Yeah. <laughs> Same here, pretty much. I'm so disappointed. Um, just do the same ghost trick we've been doing all the time? It's pretty obvious, Lynn, you know. We're kind of one trick pony at this point. Yeah, it, it, like, there are two things that we can do. Ghost and it, trick! No, three things that we can do. <laughs> we can uh, go back in time, we can move between objects, and we can manipulate objects. That is it. I mean, I suppose we can also talk, which is the other thing that There's we can do. There's one more thing we can do. There's definitely one more thing we can do. We can get the fuck out of here and just leave her. <laughs> well, yes, but then we'd probably not be able to find out anything because, you know, she's kind of the person who sort of killed us. So we probably need to keep her alive to find out what the hell's going on. I remember this part actually giving me a lot of trouble the first time I played, because you've got to be very particular about how you handle the sequence of events 
or he'll just keep dying over and over and over. I like this guy's design. Yeah, but, I mean, at least you can uh, just keep going back and back and back and back to make sure that he doesn't die eventually. At least the game is fair in that respect. Oh, now you want to do retakes. I see how it is. <laughs> <laughs> so, what you're saying is we got to go back, back and back, to back and back. Yeah, obviously. Might as well, you know, go back to the start of this part and do it all again. Hey, you up for that, guys? You hurt me, Richie. You cut directly to my core, but I can't say it's unwarranted, honestly. I have been shook at this. this. <laughs> I mean, to be fair, I think we'd be very much like this gentleman here by the time we were done with that. What, dead and hanging through the, like, windshield of a van? Yes, exactly. I don't drive, though, so that metaphor doesn't make a lick of sense. Yes, but I do. Oh, Richie, are you going to kill us all in a vehicular homicide? Um, wasn't in wasn't in my schedule to do so, but I mean I can certainly add it in there if you were uh, were offering. Um, <laughs> if you if you make us do one more retake, I'll fucking do it. <laughs> it's definitely in your schedule. I've seen it. You have it today, Friday, October the thirteenth. Uh, yeah, skull and crossbows, death. It's all in there. That is true. Yeah, I, I forgot about that one. God damn it. Ah, eight p.m. Jazzercise. Nine p.m. Solve world hunger. Tell no one. <laughs> 10 p.m. Murder everyone in HFC. I mean, just another Friday. Oh, <laughs> uh, you see, this is, this is the insanity of Friday the 13th, because obviously, we're actually recording this very close to the uh, release date of the video, and uh, yeah, it's driving us all slightly wappy. So, yeah, it wasn't an actual ladybug, it was. The kind of bugs bug. that the police plant, and uh, when <laughs> when you try and fry a piece of equipment like that, it emits a high pitched <laughs> sound or something very close to it. I can't get that high. So yeah, it knocked him out, and he crashed through the thing, and that set forth a chain of events that ended up killing Lid as well. Holy shit! This is Final Destination. I love it. Also, it does kind of make sense then now with the uh, ladybug. Bug, bug. I was kind of confused. I you would want to go through all that effort. Clearly, it's very important. Um, so they needed the ladybug, bug, 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 to spy on uh, Blessy and Blames upstairs. <laughs> As they fight Blonic and Blails. There you go. There you go. <laughs> So the only way we're actually going to solve these tragic, you know, circumstances is to root out the cause of the tragedy, which is to stop that book from ever being planted. Or just stop it from being killed. Or make sure that he's not wearing the headphones when it occurs, or just, you know, move the book somewhere else so he's not going to hear it. So it's not going to get burned. We could blow up the car before he gets into it. That way he never crashes into the chicken kitchen and Lane doesn't get crucified. See, Ghost Trick, there's not just one answer. I mean, I could go back in time to when the chicken kitchen was first built and have them install security fence to prevent cars from crashing into it. Done. Why, why stop there? Let's go back in time to when the CEO of the chicken kitchen was first born and, you know, murder him in the crib. And now there's no more chicken, and now all the police are going to be out there doing their jobs, not congregating at point X. Seriously, how, why are the police at a restaurant so often that they gave it a, an official designation? But now, they can actually go solve murders and solve crimes and keep people from dying. Alright, I, I, I rescind the baby murder. Let's just give him, like, instead of chicken toys in the crib, just give him, like, I don't know, potatoes. Open a potato kitchen instead. There's so much versatility you can get out of a potato. Oh no, I've gone full Irish. This is a bad moment for me. Yeah, potato. Oi. Um, funny story about potatoes, actually. Um, when I was at uni, um, we always had a joke about potatoes in our um cafeteria, basically, and we called it upper hall. Because basically, pretty much every 
every day, with, pretty much without fail, there would always be multiple types of potato as our vegetables. Hmm. And sometimes this ranged from the much more reasonable two types of potato with other veg to four types of potato and maybe one other type of veg. And so basically, yeah, you, you'd have boiled potatoes, roast potatoes, mashed potatoes, and dauphinois potatoes. And it's just like, um, can I maybe have something other than potatoes? Like, they're delicious, and you do them well, but um, I don't think they really count as proper healthy vegetables in the grand scheme of things. Yeah, bit too much starch. Yeah, so we, we just always took the piss out of that. See, I live in America, where our government officially recognizes pizza as a vegetable, so that's just all the vegetable I eat. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, but to be fair, you, you've got... I mean, I'm going to get ever so slightly political here, but you've got a president who said that he met the president of the US Virgin Islands, <laughs> which is him. <laughs> so, uh, 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 that kind of explains a, a lot. <laughs> I'm sorry, yeah, I, I read that too earlier, and Jesus Christ, man. Like, I don't give a fuck what you think about his politics and all that, but the dude's a fucking... He's a set of clown shoes, size 60. <laughs> no reason to stay there and continue vaguely jabbing political sides. Let's go back to the chicken kitchen and meet one of the, the most chill side characters, the chef. His nose may look like a bell pepper, but this man can seriously cook. He cooks the chicken whole, on stovetop. I mean, that's impressive that you're able to get it cooked all the way thorough. Oh, definitely. I mean, it's it's pretty, pretty decent cooking to be able to manage that, and especially to get it, you know, perfectly crispy around the outside. Because generally you need an oven to do that, um, but then to be fair, he might just envelop the entire thing in flames. I like Lynn's line there, where there's smoke and chicken, there's fire. There often is, yeah. Alright, this swirly thing over here, I don't know the official name for it, but that will be the key to making sure the bug is never planted. You can probably already guess the solution, but uh, let's just wait and see how things play out. The solution is you kill the chef, and you go back even more time. Alright, over here. Fall down the thingamadoodle. Oh, wait for her to do it, I suppose. There you go. Fans activate. Smells removed. Smoke cleared. This is kind of weird that this puzzle is having you wait this long, considering that just the last ghost trick you did was mere milliseconds from death. I know, it's kind of insane. Because like, I remember when we were recording, I was just like... So you just got to wait until there's two things on the whirly gig, that's what I'm going to call it. And it was just like, um, it's taking its time to get there. And so I'm like, is it, is it actually going to get two on there? I mean, I know it takes a while to cook a chicken, but Jesus, wet man, just like, seriously, put the thing on so we can get on with this. There you go. Now we can get down to the pedal and bada bing, bada boom, wait for the smoke to build up. She'll pull the lever again, and when she's away from the chicken, you press the pedal, and boom. We switch the chickens out, and someone else gets to eat the ladybug. Someone else gets to eat government technology. There you go. What is that thing he's pouring? Is it like Tabasco sauce? Wine? I, I think it's meant to be wine. Hmm. I don't think I've ever had wine-soaked chicken, but I don't really go into alcohol stuff in general, to be honest. Alcoholic stuff. Christ, Tom, you're 28. Talk like one. The closest I ever get to is uh, beer batter brats or uh, any sort of marsala that uses a marsala wine. But other than that, yeah, no. I tend to not really like alcohol in my cooking. To be fair, I don't really do alcohol much either. Like, the most alcoholic stuff I drink is, like, very sweet cider. And that's been far less regularly, I mean it was never regular to begin with, but like I hardly drank for like the past year because just there's no need. And also, you know, the whole antidepressant tablets, kind of not supposed to drink alcohol with those, so it's 
kind of tend to avoid it. Yeah, yeah, we've all seen Indigo Prophecy. Don't mix booze with tablets. Your story will end quite quickly. Wow, I didn't think that was going to be a reference in this playthrough. From physical harm, but the mental trauma is still there. She thinks she shot Cecil, and for all we know, she did. I mean, we saw her do it, but was there more at play than just... Kapew, kapew, bow, oh, I'm dead. Probably. Keep watching. No, seriously, keep watching, I need the views. Lynn did nothing wrong. <laughs> well, no, Tom, you don't need the views anymore. You have a Patreon account. That's clearly where all the money needs to come from. Oh, yeah. Good point. Ha! <laughs> uh, but yeah, also, please do keep watching, because, you know, we've got another, like, 20 minutes of this part, and <laughs> we, we, we've spent a long time getting this to this point, and so please, please, please see it through to the end with us, because we've suffered, and therefore you should too. Hey, people shouldn't suffer when they come to watch a Hellfire commentary. Oh, no, okay. definitely not, obviously. This is a very sophisticated brand of entertainment. To be fair, you have to have a very high IQ to understand the intricacies of my comedy, etc, etc, fucking Rick and Morty joke. Did you hear that someone traded a car for that sauce? Yes. Yes, I did hear that and just thought, oh my good lord. <laughs> I'm mildly amused because now I have an entire new group of bronies to piss off. Yeah, basically. I think I, think I saw... Um, someone post on something or other, or someone f screenshotted someone posting on Tumblr or something. Oh my god, have we become the next bronies? Yes. After this incident, yes, yes you have. And that is not an accolade anybody should want to, to gain. Seriously, you didn't see people go batshit crazy at KFC when this game came out? Well, to be fair, Ghost Trick, mildly successful, nothing on the level of uh, Rick and Morty, but uh, yeah, enough about that. I, I keep meaning to watch it, but then again, I've got My Hero Academia, I've got Pokemon, I've got Dragon Ball Super, oh my god, those are all animes. I think Flame was right, guys, I'm the weeb. You are a fucking weeb, dude. The show I'm gonna start watching is Breaking Bad, because I actually have never seen it. Even though I make a living selling drugs in New Mexico. <laughs> I'm still in the middle of American Horror Story cult. And was thinking of starting... Don't even want to start that one. It's relatively enjoyable so far, to be fair. Is it as good as Freak Show? Um... I... Mm, it's debatable. Yeah. Yeah. Because Freak Show was the best. I cried no less than five times during Freak Show. And I'll accept nothing less of another American Horror Story season. Uh, well, th there's certainly been no points where you'd want to cry yet. I'd say it's probably... The, well, for me, it's ever so slightly more terrifying, in because obviously it's dealing with killer clowns and trypophobia and all that sort of stuff, so it, it's, it's pushing the right buttons to just make me feel uneasy. Um, but... I'm very confused where I am at the minute with it, um, but still. Speaking of killer clowns, Richie, do you know what the word for a fear of clowns is? Chlorophobia. Do you know where the word comes from? Um, I don't know where it comes from, no. So, uh, the word cholera comes from, I think it's the Greek word for stilts? because there is no word for clown, so instead they use the word for stilt to imply stilt walkers or stilt performers ah. as being the closest approximation to clowns for the uh, phobia name. That's amazing. This dude doesn't have a call. Interesting. Eh, it's probably nothing. Eh, I mean... I, I mean, to be fair, I would assume he doesn't have a call because it was Lynn that we went in to save, so clearly it's the person in the kind of top tier ghost trick that remembers. Anybody in any further tiers ain't gonna remember. I gotcha, because his life was saved within a ghost trick. Okay. I mean, that's my assumption anyway. That's how I bamboozle all my enemies. God, she's just, just packing away that chicken over there. 
I mean, you, you could get some sauce or some sides. Not even gonna order some coleslaw to go with that chicken. No, okay, girl. You do you. Sometimes you just want the taste of meat in your mouth. Mm. I mean, I can relate on a lot of levels. Tom, you, you might want to rethink that uh, statement. <laughs> <laughs> No, I think uh, this statement is standard. Uh, publish it. We're good. Alright, so I guess Lynn is on the lam. So, finish your chicken and maybe vamoose? There's no time to be sitting around eating fucking fricassee, alright? Yeah, right, Lynn. You got a whole night full of murdering friends to get to. Hmm, well, maybe that's why she's stockpiling fuel right now. She's carbo-loading for her friend-murdering rampage. True, but then, to be fair, she has died quite a few times tonight. She probably needs the energy. Although, to be fair, this is like, what, like nearly 11 o'clock at night? So, uh, Jesus Christ, she is eating very late. It's not going to be good if she tries to go to sleep anytime soon. You shouldn't, you shouldn't, uh... I think Faramir in Lord of the Rings said it best. It is not best to sleep and so soon after meat. You will really, really take this from me. It's happened many a time. You will wake up bloated and pissy. See, I'm always really weird. If I go to bed full, I just wake up more hungry than I would have if I didn't go to bed with food in my stomach. Well, so, you're a skinny I just fuck. Avoid that. It, it's, it's different for us funny chubsters, okay? <laughs> funny chubsters. Oh, that's adorable. So yeah, why ain't there no core is the grammatically incorrect way of saying this, but uh, yeah, that's, that's a good point. Everyone we've saved who did develop a core was conscious when they died, so... Oh, yeah, forgot about that potential option for an explanation. So, you know, don't, uh... Don't go sleeping at the wheel, okay guys? Stay conscious, all times. No dying in your sleep, or else you'll wake up dead. At least if you die from a heart attack, you can rest assured knowing that Cecil's out there saving Lynn. I mean, he's not he doesn't even know you exist, but the possibility is there at the very least. So basically that makes Cecil Superman, then in the, you know he's out there and he probably could save you, but whether he's actually going to realise that you need saving is a different kettle of fish. Very true. We have a lot of text to go through here, and uh, it's just a little bit of details about Detective Jowd and whatnot. Here's Lynn's hero, the very reason she became a police officer or detective in the first place, and I think we're going to get a flashback. Oh, here we go. Hooray! It's like time travel, but not, because it's just the story that's going back in time. Well, if you think about it, every time you recall a memory, you are technically time traveling. <gasps> oh my god. I know, I blew my own fucking mind there. <laughs> oh my god. But there, there, is a, there, there is a slight problem with that, because whenever you recall a memory, you actually end up rewriting that memory in your head. Parallel universe. Be yeah, well, yeah, that would be one explanation for it. Alternate time. Because um, obviously people don't necessarily... I know how to press A half a time. Because obviously when people remember things, you don't necessarily always remember it exactly correctly. And once you've remembered it in one way, the next time you remember it is going to be very similar to that previous way. And eventually you, you can trick yourself into remembering something that didn't actually happen. Yeah, that human memory fickleness thing. And even then, you don't actually remember the events. Instead, your brain just kind of paces together this color with these angular lines, with this temperature and these sensations. And then you kind of like, I don't know, you sort of paste the the parts together and then the memory comes that comes uh, into existence. I swear the Ace Attorney series has actually used that angle before, but for the life of me, I can't think of what case it was. Um... Uh, wasn't it the one with the, uh, the gangster kid or whatever, with the doctor? I really think it was an Apollo Justice case that did something like that, because they were trying to remember, like, what direction the gunshot rang from. Yeah, I mean, I don't think it is in any of the original case, the original trilogy cases, because I certainly don't remember it 
being a thing. Mm -hmm. uh, there may or may not be people... Well, no, actually, no, there might have been one, and it might have been um, Justice for All and The Big Top, with someone willfully misremembering a situation. Oh, for that goddamn case. I know it's a meme to complain about it, but, uh, yeah, Mo, fucking Mo, here's a treat. Mo, memeing it up, why you eat? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, to be fair, Justice for All is filled with some not-so-stellar cases. He didn't have enough time, and I feel so bad, because the only reason the game's writing is bad is not because the writer was bad, it's because the good writer wasn't given enough time to write something good. So, ah. Where is he right now? Is he in the fucking Pose Dimension? What's quite awesome is, you know that that little motion there? That's the gif that is on the Ghost Trick Wikipedia page to show off the animation of the game. Nice. So yeah, yeah, Detective Child is Lynn's hero, and uh, Cabanello is, I guess, a mentor at this point? Yeah, it certainly, it certainly sounds that way, and... I have to say, like, the name Cabanella just confused me. Like, there's loads of names in this game where I look at it and just think, where the hell does that name come from in terms of its, like, roots? We've talked like, about Lynn's this in a previous pretty part, normal. Though. I know. Oh, yes, we did, actually, because it's, it's corpse, isn't it? Bloody hell. You can see it's been a while since we did Ghost Trick Coms. My brain has gone in a very different direction since then, and obviously, we were talking about memory just then. Clearly mine's not quite up to scratch these days. Ah, two inspectors, differing ways of solving a crime. The original odd couple. Two detectives in houses opposed. Okay, well we're just gonna soundbag that joke, apparently it wasn't worth laughing at. <laughs> I thought you were going for like some Shakespeare, Romeo and Juliet thing and the detectives were gonna kiss and I was totally on board. We're 45 minutes into a 52 minute part, so we're kind of just like... Ooh, can 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 they stop talking? Like this this is great and really interesting when you're playing the game because you're just like, oh, this is all really fascinating stuff. Um, but when you're blithering over it like we are, you're just kind of going, yeah, that 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 is that is text. I I really like this story, but that that is definitely text. Suffice it to say that uh, yeah, I don't think that that's a good thing, Len. Yeah, that's a. Uh... I agree with Sissel here, but at least Cabanella, you know, he's ambitious. He'd probably be a Slytherin were he in Hogwarts, another fictional place. I don't believe the Chicken Kitchen ever actually existed. I think you're lying to me, Richie. But uh, my point is, I don't know. Ah, there must be some symbolism for why he wears the white coat, but uh, we'll have to wait and see. Well, I mean, yeah, we did. I'm sure it'll come up eventually. But it'll probably be something to do with, you know, like him having a spotless record or something. That's very common. I mean, if you look at, um... Oh, God, what's his name? Manfred von Karma. He was all... Oh, my perfect record. No one's going to ruin my perfect record. Yeah, tough shit. Ah, my perfect record. Ah. <laughs> oh, no, my perfect record ruined by shoulder cramps. I know what's in the box, because that's the part of footage we recorded most recently. <laughs> I mean, also, Tom, you know what's in the box because you played the game before you did the recording. Nope. Memory. I know what's in the box. It's Brad Pitt's wife's head. Or a soul. I uh, know. Maybe it's the final episode of One Piece. Have they found the One Piece yet? No... And apparently, but they've kind of narrowed it down to what island it's supposed to be on, and now they know where to get directions to get to said island, but they're now they're too busy fighting super pirates. Right. It's friendship, guys. It's going to be the friends we made along the way, and honestly, Robin is the only character that matters with the getting One Piece plot. Well, I don't know enough about it anyway. I'm more going for JoJo when it comes for... Uh... The animes. I've watched 800 episodes of this shit. It's like, damn it, I needed some sort of fulfillment from it. 
Yeah, and the annoying thing is, is when you're that deep into something, it's kind of impossible to stop, because just like, I have put this many hours into it, I need to see it through to the end. I have to. I have to see that stupid fucker get his treasure. Oh, God almighty. Uh, he better be <laughs> Who shattered Pink Diamond? I need to know. <laughs> <laughs> see, uh. at least I know I'm going to get better plot resolution than any Steven Universe fan will. Like, I feel bad for you guys as a One Piece fan. Hey, I like the show, okay? It's not always well written, but when it is, it's on point. Any who's or bees. Lin is not gonna gain a single pound from that chicken, which I think she came back from the dead with ghost tricks of her own, honestly. Just vanishes the material as soon as she consumes it. Oh, no. We did see her do a back handspring in the middle of a restaurant, so she's definitely athletic. She's probably just gonna, you know, run a marathon to burn it all off or something. I would have assumed so, yes. Or, you know, maybe murdering your friends burns calories. I mean, maybe it does, yes. I mean, if, you, if you're expending energy doing it, then yes, it would burn calories. Oh, they're moving the execution up. This is bad. I think we need to go back to the prison and run some interference. You can't fucking do that. You can't do that. I mean, we can. That's that's how the game works, Bexy. That's how the ghost tricks operate. It's just so not fair. And also, you know, Detective Jared kind of knows sort of who we are because he drew our face. So we probably need to, you know, stop him from dying so that we can at least talk to him because I'm sure he'd be very useful to talk to, to find out one of the mysteries of me. The mysteries of me. Which one is my good side, left or right? Huh. We've seen both of them, but we haven't seen Cecil dead on. <clears throat> that wasn't meant to be a joke, but I'll accept it. It's the pun of the evening. We'll let it slide this one time, but next time, you're dead. Well, I'm gonna get an airfall after we finish recording anyway for certain things, so don't worry about it. <laughs> Alright, we're off! Did she just Naruto run? I I think I saw arms. <laughs> don't bring the Naruto run into this. I know where you were going <laughs> with that. Anywho, we saved not only Lin, but the driver of the van from certain doom. And chicken has been consumed, now it's time to save Detective Zhao. So we'll see you next time in the Ghost Trick playthrough when we head on over to the prison once more. See you then.